Hi everyone, welcome to the IPFS Core Implementations Weekly Sync for Monday the 30th of November. I am Aking Brain, I'll be your host. We're going to go through our high power initiatives, our other initiatives, Q&A, parking lot, all the usual stuff. It's gonna be awesome. Uh, kicking off for the high priority initiatives, upcoming and ship releases. What's going on? Yes, the IPFS 0.8 RSC is, is near. We're like, we're like this close. Um, there's there's a couple of of like things to polish up on uh, the pinning services and local pinning, but there everything seems to be passing, and so it's just like making sure we have like a final uh, final review of of nailing down all the interop things we needed to inter we needed to nail down. Um, but yeah, we're almost there. We'll cover more when we get to them in the next sections. And so uh, we also started in JSLP uh, the preparation for the 0 0.30 release. Uh, I think with Jacob last week and we decided since we already have uh, so much to release that it didn't make that much sense to wait for the rendezvous to, to be done. So we also wanted to start making smaller releases from now on. So we'll, uh, we are started to prepare to do the RC probably this week for uh, JSLP 0 0.30. I already started integrating with JSIPFS and uh, the CI is green, which is great. Uh, and yeah, I, I'm basically now finishing some docs on the uh, Relay production guide uh, for enabling people to easily use the auto relay and also just finishing some of the JS docs work on Liquid Speed Core. Very exciting. Definitely pro many small releases rather than big bang releases. Uh, next up is pinning services. Uh, Lytle, do you want to give the status? Uh, yeah, totally. Uh, so um, the pull request in Go IPFS is green, which is good. Uh, and it's ready for review. Uh, I sneaked in uh, san like sanitization of uh, secrets. Uh, it should do the same thing that we already do for the private key. That's the short story. Uh, and uh, Iraqli created a mock pinning service, which is much lighter uh, than running entire rails up in with uh, Docker Compose on the CI. So. We may want to switch to that. Uh, now that we know the tests pass and are green, we may switch to that so we don't need uh, Docker-based infra on the CI. Uh, do that before we merge it to master, mostly to ensure the CI is robust. Because right now, even though we check out the specific revision of the uh, Ruby on Rails, Pinning service at uh, the Docker Compose file itself uses the latest tag for a Docker image. So it actually does not pin CI to specific version and it may break any, at any point. Uh, so, in effort to make a CI stable, I suggest we switch uh, before we match the PR. But that should not block reviewing the PR, it's just uh, flips replacing the uh, remote pinning service, which for the sharpness tests, we just point sharpness test a specific port. Um, it should not make any difference. Nice. Um, next up is local pinning. So local pinning is basically done. We've we've uh, hammered through all of the repo migrations stuff before we have to go back and like rewrite how we do migrations due to some problems that we noticed. Um, we switched things over. We're having some minor issues with um, with the Cbor serialization deserialization stuff. That's fixed now because we're using atlases. Um, the only thing that I, I noticed today is I was, I was double checking some like 
JS and Go interop stuff is that we don't use, we use uh, the pin, I guess, depth as an enum instead of uh, an integer. Um, neither Go nor JS actually support anything other than direct or recursive pins. Um, it's like something we've talked about. So I don't know if this is like, and, and the remote pinning services don't do this either. So it seems like we might be fine just leaving it as an enum, but I'm open to changing it also if, uh, if people think that preparing us for that is important. Um, I also noticed that I, I couldn't tell whether JavaScript is storing their data store in dot pins or slash pins. Uh, <laughs> but those are, those are the only two things left, and then I think this is done. Um, uh, SecIO removal, we've, SecIO has been off on the bootstrappers for a while. Uh, SecIO has been, the old DHT nodes have been, or DHT booster nodes have been turned off uh, and the new ones don't support SecIO. So the nodes that are still on the network and still connected to everybody, or those that are still connected to people in the public DHT are just nodes that have either kind of hacked around things or they just haven't turned themselves off yet and restarted. Um, hopefully those people will, will realize what's up and upgrade soon because we have been posting all over the interwebs for like months about this. Uh, but everything seems good and network seems to be getting actually a little faster because we're, you know, getting rid of some of the old nodes. We haven't, I haven't seen any people screaming about not nope. having SecIO removed, so. Yeah, yeah, I mean, no, no screaming. So hopefully, you know, all good. Maybe we'll just give it one more week and then completely tear down the old boosters. Yeah, I mean, right now they're off. I think it's just a matter of hitting the delete button on the instances. Yeah. If no one complains, yeah, for a week, we can just hit the delete button. OK. Um, on the pinning thing, <clears throat> for the record, JSIPFS does support arbitrary depths. Uh, it just oh, doesn't. Thanks. This doesn't expose it at the moment. Um, Hector talked me into thinking it was important because <clears throat> he's, you know, it was for the cluster use case of saying, "Here's a DAG, like just just pin this bit of it, and then this one can pin like the rest of it or, or whatever." Um, but in order to have API compatibility, we'd go. It only actually supports uh, direct or recursive, but recursive just means an infinite pin depth. Interesting. And we, I guess we could we could store the pin depth we could store the pin depth as a as you know integer slash infinity and then add support for depth later if we want to maybe that would be sort of the you know not so much work but save us going for but like you know help us out going forward in the pinning uh, service API uh, we initially had depth. Uh, parameter, uh, but we like removed it, and it's like now it's just implicitly recursive, mostly because we did not want to make it that decision in that third party API before we make a decision in like Go IPFS, JS IPFS. So that's the only reason why we don't have like the type of pin, and it's just implicit. Okay, yeah, so maybe we'll add depth as as an integer slash infinity i'll try and make sure that the infinity is the same one that we're using in javascript um i may tag you alex for a review to make sure that i did it right <laughs> i mean we what, what even are numbers in javascript anyway what even are numbers it's a good question <laughs> well can't exactly what they are <laughs> oh. well, do we have a use case for for depth uh pinning depth the cluster was one, um, and I was also, when I was messing around with NPM and IPFS, I did not want to pin all of NPM. I definitely only wanted to pin a little bit of NPM. Yeah, I mean, it's still, it's it, the use case is a little funky in that it seems like what you'd prefer is to give people like, a particular subtree of a DAG, 
but then right. you need and then you need a way to describe like a selector for like the first path where you only have like one path going down and then the whole tree but in lieu of that you could do depths and just say i'm just gonna go like you know i'm just gonna go like two levels down yeah that's what i was asking that didn't seem to me to make a lot of sense but then i just well anyway we can talk yeah. about it later so yeah. Because one of the reasons I'm saying is if we're going to do something, maybe we need to make room for something that's more, uh, maybe more in line with an actual use case, like having the ability to specify a, a selector as opposed to just a, a depth. Yeah, I think uh, the only question, uh, yeah, go ahead. I was going to say the same thing. Maybe it might make sense to pass a selector and we just support one selector that is equivalent of infinity. Uh, and then over time we can, at support to other selectors. Yeah, the empty selector would be the default and then, right? Yeah, I mean, at that point, at that point, I feel like I'd rather just leave things as they are and write a migration later because selectors only really exist in Go PLD prime and we don't really have that anywhere in the Go IPFS code base yet, except yeah. for like very tangentially. So I, I don't want to go down that so I'm kind of hole right now. So that kind of my kind of feeling is since we're kind of guessing at the need for depth, Maybe it's better that we wait till we actually get get to that bridge before we cross it. So what's, it. The, what's the application of like just pinning the top part of an IPOD tree? Um, I think it's making it more convenient for in in like a cluster sort of environment where you want to split up the chunks of the tree among people. Um, and you can coordinate all of that, but without using sort of direct pins for like every single node. It's just being like allowing that to be managed a little easier. I'm not convinced this is like the best or only way. Um, I've just seen that we talked about it before and that it was in JS. That's why I asked. So, so this the, the thing is that this this question interferes with content routing because um <clears throat> Um, this really is kind of like a content routing type strategy. And so the, the question is, should people think of the, of the uh, content trees as something that pertains to content, to the nature of content and where, as opposed to something that there is a mechanism for partitioning what things you wanna provide and not. Like we need, you see what I'm saying? Like ideally you yeah. wanna, clean mental mono and uh, the ideal model is that people content trees are so you can organize your content and you don't you organize it without worrying how you're gonna you know serve it and then the content content routing system could worry about um you know dividing up the tree between different people and so forth i mean i'm just um yeah, I, so my thinking is maybe maybe we should just like leave things as they are, punt on this, and we can do a migration when we add features. But also, I want to we can come back to this and the and like the stuff at the end. But I don't want to hold up the rest of the meeting for this. So let's let's keep going, and we'll we'll see how time goes. Uh, so we talked about second removal. Uh, next up is JS improves discoverability and connectivity. Yeah, so the, the WebSocket uh, was now updated and finally we will not anymore in the browser dial uh, non-DNS WebSocket secure multi-others. So all those annoying uh, warnings that people complain a lot will finally be gone. Uh, as I said before, I'm working now on the real life production guide and uh, in the rendezvous side of things, I started working on it in the beginning of last week and I basically got to the point where the MySQL integration database model and the queries are mostly done. Uh, but now I shift to prepare the next Lipid release and I will eventually go back uh, this week again or next one to get it done. And that's it. Uh, next up is bi-directional streaming and streaming errors in the browser. Um, so this is the same as it was last week. I don't think I've got any comments on that PR, which either means it's perfect which I find very hard to believe, or just no one's had the time to look at it. Um, if people could please cast an eye over it, I would be very grateful. Um, so in the interim, uh, I picked up the DHT work. Um, it, we were trying to basically uh, implement it in Node.js properly, um, have a some kind of reasonable 
performance guarantee about how long a query will run for. Um, the first part of that is, I think, making sure you're dialable, because what's the point of having a DHT if you're not dialable? Um, so I implemented a quick uh, network manager that uses UPnP to do hole punching uh, through your router if it supports it. Um, there's a PR open. If people could look at that, I'd be very grateful, uh, if it's also the direction that we want to go. Um, I mean, it would be really, it's still quite useful if you have, if the DHT client is working just fine and nobody's dialable and nobody is ever in server mode. Um, that's probably like, yeah, I don't know, at least for me, that seems like probably the, like the more users are like users asking for this kind of thing. Like even in Go, we see like there's a much larger number of client nodes than server nodes. Um, so yeah, just as, as a heads up, like if, if you if you start having to worry about like auto NAT and any of the other like servery things, like you could just say like, ah, screw it, we're gonna do client mode. Mm. UPnP is useful anyway for fetching content. So that, that, that doesn't say not to do that, but. Yeah, I've looked at mode. the UPnP thing uh, a little bit. I need to look at it more. I think overall it looks good. There's just some, how we're updating addresses we'll need to get updated. I'll look at that more and then comment in there. Sweet. Okay, that is the end of the high priority initiatives. Uh, moving on to other initiatives. Um, so far, add process in the web UI. Um, that's me. Uh, it's on a back burner while I'm working on the uh, remote cleaning stuff. So update there this week. Um, I have something on the next item too, which is TypeScript integration for IPFS. Um, so there's a proposal now in the issues, which kind of tries to describe how we can do things more conveniently and hopefully better. Uh, if you care about any of the TypeScript stuff, it might be worse for you to look at there and provide a comment. Um, I, I updated the pull request for IPFS bit swap uh, after Hugo go around to review it. Uh, I think I might have to do another pass on it. Uh, then there is a pull request about removing API manager, which makes typing of IPFS a lot more easier. Um, Alex, if you can review that, that would be great. Then I'll review your patch. Um, I think we need a release for IPFS DCTL because they still get all the URLs in the package, Jason. Oh yeah, Hugo, can we release that? Because I don't really see if there's any reason not to release it. It doesn't depend on the changes here. So that would make it a lot easier for me to also keep merging updates into it. Um, and what is the last one? Oh yeah, and then I discovered the regression in our typing stuff uh, after these timeout options have moved, has moved. So there's some awkwardness with TypeScript where it kind of sees the types that are not within module, but doesn't really work with them correctly. So everything ended up being any. So there's a pull request that fixes it. Uh, maybe it's landed already. Uh, that's what I, my end on TypeScript. I think Hugo has more updates here. Yep. Um, okay, so yeah, the bit swap stuff um, was all already talked about. We have PRs for the interface data store, the data store core, and multi other. Uh, the multi other one is gonna. Uh, apparently, I think we agree that we're gonna do a, a breaking change, uh, because uh, like exporting uh, the a function that creates a class like in the old JavaScript way is hard to for TypeScript to understand that. So just exporting the class, uh, it's much better, uh, but it's a big breaking change for the users. We're gonna try to make it uh, a little bit easier, but I think we're gonna do it. Uh, there's a, um, a TypeScript bug reported uh, that has been marked as, as a bug and scheduled for 4.2. So that's super good for us. It's gonna unblock a lot of uh, easier typing with uh, JS docs and also the next version of type doc um, 
looks to work much, much better with common JS and JS doc types um, or common JS sources with JS doc types. So that's also awesome. And yeah, that's it. And in the, the LPTP side, I updated uh, the, my PR to use the new IG that we released last week. And uh, now I also can use the type check script. Uh, we had uh, more than 400 uh, errors uh, on types. I fixed more, most of them, but now I need to go to the interface to unblock the rest because we, we have things like the transport and the muxer, and then we access uh, methods from there and we don't have declarations for them. So basically I will need to first create a type declaration for uh, each interface and then I will be able to finish the, the lib PPR and that's it. Well, there's actually one thing that might be worth considering. Uh, one thing that I'm trying to do is things that are interfaces between components to define them as interfaces like uh, data store and a few other things. Uh, for transport, it might make same sense, make sense there too. So we code against the interface rather than against our own implementations that depends on like internal quirks. Because so you can say if interface is incomplete, it doesn't have things, then we should like iterate on the interface to improve it rather than just find the back doors. Yeah, we uh, I'm I'm doing also with the interface because uh, uh, from the LibTP perspective, you basically uh, for example, to the transport manager, you provide transports, but then in, inside the transport manager, it's like everything is a transport and not like WebSockets or TCP. So you need okay. to have the interface so that you can use and have the types generically. Yeah, so I, I think it would be interesting to decide where do we keep those interface files? Because right now I kind of have a few that I, in the pull request in the IPFS repo, but they don't really belong there. Uh, so maybe we need yeah, some in, package that has like interface stuff. Yeah, in, in LibP2P we have the LibP2P interfaces repo and then we have a, a folder per interface and I'm adding the types per folder. There is one for okay, each okay. interface. Thanks. Next up is the use of shared node from service worker. Um, yeah, I uh, did another pass of updating uh, pull request to uh, address review comments. I'm not sure if, did you? I, I don't know. I have to look if it got any review yet. For the um, the example? Mm -hmm. It's merged. It's merged. Yay. OK, so it's done then. All right. Uh, Baja 2 support. This is our weekly, they haven't decided on their release thing yet. Right, the only thing that I've done is uh, remove the, there's some profile, a uh, Badger 2 profile information that was merged a while ago, remove that so that we don't have any reference to Badger 2 and, and so, but they haven't moved, just check this morning. Uh, no update on NAT traversal, no update on Unix of SV 1.5 just conscious of the time and I did want Walkfort to talk about IPLD a little bit. Uh, go IPFS GC improvements? Uh, some prototyping work, but no, nothing to report yet. Uh, design uh, uh, pending very soon as it's been for a while. <laughs> so, but no, they did some prototyping work which revealed a couple of other things which I'll discuss with those who, do, uh, those who will be concerned with it. Anyway, um, yeah, nothing Nothing to report there other than that. Cool. Um, into the other stuff, design review proposals. Uh, please have a look at my bi-directional streaming PR. Um, blockers and asks. Questions. Parking lot. Um, oh, I, I had a Yay. ask, sorry. Um, can we create those uh, meeting notes like after this meeting for the next week? So as I'm making things, I could add notes there rather than having a like temporary buffer and then kind of trying to put them in right before meeting. I think it would be very helpful if we did so. 
Ja. Thanks. Okay. I guess Coffee. I have an ask about the parking lot, which is that uh, Eric, the link isn't uh, isn't public, which I don't know if that's intentional or not. Um, oh, great. No, I don't use Google Docs very much. And so when I do, I have frankly no idea what I'm doing, especially with access control. Um, so I'll figure out how to fix that later. But there's a link there that you some people should be able to see and everyone will see later once I fix it of um, the IPLD team is figuring out what our priorities should be for the coming year and trying to take some notes in advance on that. With all the usual caveats of Lord knows and year in advance waterfall planning will probably fail and we will also be agile, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But we're trying to gather some lists of things that we definitely know should be a high priority. And I've started gathering those into a doc. So um, some of that might be of interest to folks here. Some of it might not. Um, it's probably at least a little relevant, especially for anyone who's going to be thinking about how we integrate the latest IPLD code bases into, I think especially GoIPFS is looking forward to some renovations there. Um, if there's anything that anyone working on IPFS can think of that should be a super high priority for us or to support that, it would be great to hear your thoughts on that and maybe try to get it into our planning early. Um, otherwise, I guess that's just sort of FYI. If you find big planning documents fun, I have a gift for you. How, how do you want to feedback in the document? Um, comments or whatever it's called, the change proposals? Or... Sure. <laughs> I don't know how Google Docs work as I previously disclaimed. <laughs> Right. To me, it sounds like the workflow that makes sense for you, which means that if you have questions, then you throw in a comment. And if you're like, I think you should add this in, then you use the suggestion. Yep, go oh, for so, it. Also, Hannah and Alex Krugshank will be back on next week. Um, so we can sync up with them as well and figure out everything we need to do to get Go IP a little prime. All up in Go IPFS. Um. I have one other thing that I want to point out. Uh, so unrelated to this subject, uh, as I've been working a little bit more on the remote pinning stuff, um, I did find certain API things a little awkward and I was wondering, and then I talked to Lytle and it seems that uh, decisions were intentional and the goal is to fix them later on. And I want to propose maybe it's good to have a document where we say, this is where we want to be and how we want to be, but we decided to do this now for now. Uh, so it's easy to share with everyone involved to be able to see where it's going and what the end goal is. Um, I believe we, we had this uh, like hackpad, uh, like Margaret document with a pin remote, and then we try to model how pin local would look like. Adin, Jake, do you... yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have a HackMD where we tried to basically, from the Go IPFS and JS IPFS, like what what we want the sort of the the IPFS APIs to look like that allow us to do this. I suspect that I'm not sure exactly like which points you're getting at, or whether it's the things like we don't, uh, you know, not authenticating using like the P2P streams or whether it's things like, or having ACLs for groups of pins or whether it's things like, you know, uh, I, I can passing out selectors specifics. into a pin. So uh, two things that are, I found a little awkward was, uh, first of all, having this remote and local namespace, I think what I would feel more naturally using pinning services say IPFS pin and specify target where, and it could be local and few other services that I named or like something along those lines rather than having to procedurally go and like pin every place I want to do. Um, another so, one was the request ID. I find it weird that it's like service provider generates one versus it's derived from the pin itself. Uh, like we could use CIDs for instance for that. Yeah, I mean, that's, I don't know if it is we could we could move to that. It's I don't know if it's strictly required, 
right now we just tell people to use unique things and we could come back. I mean, we could come back to that. But so the problem is yeah. that on a client, it requires additional bookkeeping. Now I can't just check what the CID thing is. I have to like have this mapping between things and request IDs as something generated. And at some point I have to also like clean up. It just yeah, the, one of the things that ideas is to be able to support multiple pins. We have multiple pins for the same CID. So yeah. we're using different yeah. unique keys. Yeah, but like maybe, so when you create a pin object, it has a bunch of other fields. So I imagine there should be something different across them. So that would lead to the different CIDs. Or if they don't, maybe they should have something. Feel like, a, I don't know, maybe uh, you assign an additional thing. So you, 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 you um, here's the issue. So you're suggesting that you want, first of all, you're making an assumption that CID sh pins should be have different stuff in them, which is a sort of an awkward assumption, I guess. But, but are you suggesting that like the pin uh, ID should be some kind of a hash of all the things, CIDs that are in it? Yeah, so we do have a pin object, right? Well, not really, but we kind of pretend so that we have a pin object that has metadata and much of other things and actually link to the CID. So what I'm saying, maybe is that pin should not be identified by the request ID that somebody generates, but should be identified by the hash of that thing. And if you want to pin the same thing, same like dog with two different pins, well, make something different about it. That's up to you sort of. I think what might, you might run into some like, I'm trying to think if you run through like causality or timing issues, because you'd want the random, like it, let's say you just threw in a yeah, random yeah. number. So, so in here's each the thing. problem. Right. Yeah, the, the problem is race conditions because you have asynchronous access to the pinning service. And if you say something like, remove my pin, um, um, it's kind of like, I guess it becomes an item potent. So, we if you do if you do remove an add, and the yeah, and the unique and saying. the unique number that's inside of the thing being hashed is generated on the client side, then then you're in trouble because now you don't know which thing was supposed to happen first. Um, so we're 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 a so bit over time. Yeah. I just want to tie in here that like there there are a lot of things that we could be doing differently here, and then there's also like the MVP scope of getting the thing out, which we're doing right now. And then there's the very big scope of this, which is likely libp 2 p based for the exchange, potentially actually doing thread DB, like threads for the actual pinning service. That was like the pie in sky from earlier this year on the pinning service. So I agree there is a, a roll up of all this information that we should at least try to do, like gather the summary of this, especially like before we wrap up for this year. So that we, you know, people don't go on holiday and then come back and totally forget what we're doing, where we create this thought stream of, hey, we had the pinning meetup earlier this year. Lidl created the doc for the work streams. We created some subsequent hack MDs for like those various things. Let's roll up the thoughts on like, okay, when we come back to revisit this, especially like looking at improving content routing early next year, where should pinning go in the long term to have those conversations so that we can then write out the thoughtful thing um, with getting this thing working for now so that we can migrate over to the, the better well thought out thing in the future. Yeah, that sounds right. That's basically what I was asking for, especially like now that I'm getting more feedback on why things are a certain way, because there was a document that I could just read would be more effective and I can know what the reasoning is. Also, as I guess like a brief heads up on things related to the IPFS API, we have a very difficult time at least in Go, uh, but like updating updating the APIs without breaking everyone's flows. So we have some, we have a, like a, a couple of proposals in place for like how we might tackle this, but that's sort of the reason things look a little awkward is because of doing gradual development without making everything break. Um, and we need to make our upgrade paths easier, but that's like a, that's another thing on the roadmap. Please take a look at my gRPC PR. <laughs> it helps with APIs. Oh my gosh, it is way better. I mean, subjectively. Um, we are way over time, I think.
we should call this to a close. Uh, thank you for coming, everyone. Do please put your uh, async updates in the notes. Uh, let us know what you've been working on, what you're blocked on, what you're doing next. It's going to be like everyone wants to know. Let's talk about this stuff. Um, cool. Thank you very much, everyone. This has been the IBFS Core Implementations Weekly Sync for Monday, the 30th of November. Uh, we'll see you all next week. Bye.